All right, good morning. We are super happy and lucky to have uh, Dr. Mike Van Thielen with us today. And Dr. Mike, we're gonna be talking about EMR slash EMF, um, The Hidden Threat. You're actually author of a, of a great book here that I've read, um, and we're gonna talk about that today. And we're gonna go into more detail but before we get started on that, I just want to give you a, a, an introduction because you've got a lot of credentials and uh, you've obviously been out there in the industry doing a lot of research and doing a lot of good in the world. So PhD of holistic nutrition, doctor of oriental medicine, uh, licensed physical therapist, licensed acupuncture physician, um, uh, bachelor's in professional health studies. Is that right, bachelor's? Uh, bachelor's in physical education, uh, entrepreneur, philanthropist, international keynote speaker, which is how I met you, which is at a big conference uh, down in Orlando a few weeks ago, and obviously an author and a world record holder in swimming, uh, which is something else that hopefully we can just touch on briefly because sure. <laughs> uh, you, you have a long history of, of uh, obviously being in swimming, but you're setting records in your 40s and, uh, and still maintaining a very high level of health. So with that said, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for coming on with us. And um, while we're on the subject, how, how did you get into um, natural medicine practices? Uh, well, that's a good question. I'm, uh, everybody can hear my accent. I'm originally from Belgium. I came to the United States in 1997, but in Belgium, basically, I went to the University of Brussels. I was really, you know, into sports, especially swimming. So I went to the University of Brussels and did four years of physical education. And then I started traveling with the Belgian Olympic swim team. And uh, I uh, went back to school to become at the same University of Brussels to become a physical therapist. So my upbringing, yes, was into sports, but uh, also in the conventional realm of medicine, right? Uh, and when I came to the United States, uh, one of my employers introduced me to acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine. And I really got interested into that. So I went back to school in Orlando uh, for the College of Integrative Medicine and became a doctor of oriental medicine, certified in homeopathy, homotoxicology, Chinese herbal medicine, a wealth of information. But after treating hundreds, if not thousands of patients, I still realized that yes, the natural medicine practices such as chiropractic, acupuncture, food therapy, you know, you name it, hyperbaric oxygen, homeopathy, hormones, all those, they are obviously less harmful and less invasive than conventional medicine, meaning drugs and surgeries, but I really didn't see the long lasting results either. So I really felt I had to do myself and my family, but also all my clients a favor and dig deeper and go back to basics. And that's when I decided to get my PhD in holistic nutrition. And I also had to look back at mother nature uh, and see how mother nature and animals in the wild live and how they stay healthy. And, and by combining those two things, I really think I stumbled upon the truths of health. And that's what I've been sharing, you know, uh, many years and on many stages is, is my philosophy on health and how we can um, obtain and maintain optimal health. So that's how I got into uh, this position, Sean. That's awesome. So just real quickly, just for all the people out there, Dr. Mike actually has six books, I believe. Is that right? Uh, six or seven, I can't six keep Six or that. seven. <laughs> and so this is a subject that you're very knowledgeable on. And in the future, we're going to talk about a lot of that. And like I said, I was very fortunate because I was able uh, to, to get a lot of this great information at that uh, convention down in Orlando. And so I witnessed you down there as a keynote speaker. And you promoted something called Health Freedom which was fantastic. So can you share with the viewers uh, what the health freedom uh, concept is and why we tend to make the wrong choices when it comes to our health? Yes, yeah, sure. It's, it's, you know, when I talk, we got to get people engaged. And so yeah. we, we like to make a team. So usually, you know, health freedom is my team. And especially, you know, the last few years with everything that's been going on, our freedoms, especially also in this country, have been under fire. Um, but there are certain freedoms they never can take. And one of them is obviously, you know, health freedom. What health freedom really means is that, you know, we have the choice to do with our health whatever we want to do. Yes, we can have our doctors, our healthcare professionals, big pharmaceutical companies, uh, the fake news, 
uh, we can have them control or better rule our health or we can decide to take control of our own health and that of our loved ones, right? That's right. a choice that we have. So we can either choose to be sick and sad or we can choose to be healthy and happy. And I always suggest that you choose health freedom and take control over your own health. And if people don't know how to do that or where to start, that's where you have people like myself and health coaches and functional medicine people out there that can put you on that right path to avoid drugs and surgeries and obtain and regain optimal health. Right. And so, um, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of new technology coming out. Um, I know that we, um, we talked some about the... Um, anti-aging bed covers, far infrared, a lot of other technology. But as that goes out there, one of the things that I seem to get are a lot of people that come to me with very specific um, conditions that didn't really exist maybe 15 or 20 years ago. I know that fibromyalgia, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing that you know you would have more insight on as far as how diet, health, and, and some of these other factors are sort of contributing to a lot of these health conditions that we're seeing now that we didn't see maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Um, in addition to now, that really touches into what we're talking about today, which is EMR, mm -hmm. electromagnetic radiation and EMF. So um, you coach people to regain, regain control of their health and achieve optimal health. Um, and you say that uh, we, you know, we don't have to be health, health freaks to do that. Uh, kind of clarify, you know, what, what it is that we should do that kind of set some guidelines and boundaries to sort of stay in that good health regimen. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two major concepts I want people to understand. The first one is like I just said, you can name a, a thousand diagnoses and the ICD tends continue to expand and expand. And we got all these diseases and syndromes and whatever you want it to be. But to me, uh, there's only one cause of all disease and therefore there's only one solution. So let's talk about the cause of all disease and then I'll explain why we don't have to be health freaks to be in optimal health too. So the cause of all disease is toxemia and toxemia literally means toxins in the blood. But to expand on that a little bit, it, what it means is that um, as part of just daily living, as part of our metabolism, our cells and our body is constantly uh, creating or building anabolism and breaking down catabolism, right? But the breaking down process results in waste products. But in a good functioning body, no harm is done because our waste is eliminated through our kidneys, you know, our large intestine, our skin, etc. So yes, there's toxins produced, but in a healthy condition, those toxins are removed, uh, removed from the body, so no harm is done. However, when we are exposed to and are ingest far more toxins than the, bo the body possibly can eliminate, we end up with toxemia. Toxemia then means the accumulation of toxins in our blood and our body. Too much coming in can all go out, right? So that's really what toxemia is. So now, where do those toxins come from? Well, first of all, obviously, they come from our man-made foods and drinks because they are loaded with what? Food preservatives, colorings, flavors, you know, GMOs, uh, all kinds of stuff, except essential nutrients, right? So those are toxins that we ingest on a daily basis. Number two, our, our medications, our prescription medications and over-the-counter drugs, they're nothing but a pile of toxins uh, because they're basically fake copies of active compounds of Mother things found in mother nature, like plants and herbs, etc. And so a lot of people are taking those on a daily basis, which greatly contributes to toxemia, toxins in our system. Number three, we really don't live in pristine areas anymore, right? We live in towns and cities and we're exposed to polluted water, polluted air, the exhaust fumes of our vehicles, uh, the chlorine fumes from our shower, our household products. And now, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, the, the exponential increasing exposure to electromagnetic radiation. So all of that, our environment, you know, bombards our uh, body with toxins. And then the fourth major source, obviously, of toxins in our body is our negative emotions and our stress. They really 
you know, stimulate the release of a lot of toxins and hor hormones and, and put our uh, body out of balance. And so that's where all those toxins come from. And when the body can't eliminate them, they accumulate. So there's two major things that those toxins in our body do when they're floating around. Number one, they cause free radical damage. And everybody heard about free radicals, right? Because mm -hmm. these toxins basically steal an electron from a healthy atom. And when they do that, that healthy atom becomes unstable. And that's what we call a free radical. And free radicals cause damage even on a cellular DNA level, right? Mm -hmm. And so number two, these toxins floating around basically create a, create a constant state of emergency. And in conventional medicine, we actually have a word for it. They call it systemic inflammation, right? And even according to conventional medicine, over 90% of all disease is directly related to the systemic inflammation. For example, cardiovascular disease today is not a regarded the result of high cholesterol, which by the way, always has, have, has been a hoax, a big hoax, but is directly correlated or directly the result of uh, a systemic inflammatory process. Paul Ritker, a Harvest cardiologist, identified several key markers for systemic inflammation. One of them, CRP, C-reactive protein. So you can do a simple blood test, see what your level of systemic inflammation, CRP, is, integrate certain um, strategies to lower your systemic inflammation, which we can talk about today, and then do the blood test again. And so you can objectively measure what your level of systemic inflammation is. And even conventional medicine says it's the cause of 90% of all disease, right? So if you can control that systemic inflammation, free radical damage, we will be good. So that's what the toxemia, these excess toxins are causing, free radical damage, systemic inflammation. So that's the cause of all disease, period. So what's the solution? Well, it's pretty simple, right? We got to control or check toxemia. And so simultaneously, we need to reduce the ingestion and exposure to toxins, toxins, while um, ingestion, ingesting or taking nutrients that fight free radical damage and systemic inflammation. Mm -hmm. And if we can control that toxemia, we'll be great. That's fantastic. And, you know, just one point on that is um, <clears throat> vitamins, supplements, nutrients. And it's interesting because this was about a year ago. I went in, I, I, I needed to get some vitamin C, right? Vitamin C. And you would think, hey, that's no big deal. I'm going to go to the health store, the chain, or whatever it might be. There was seven different kinds or seven different companies had vitamin C. Six of those were synthetic. And only one of those was actually naturally derived coming from a source that's actually like tangerines or something that actually produce vitamin C. And that kind of goes to your point about, you know, some of the stuff that we're going that we think is actually going to benefit us. If it's, if it's a synthetic form of it, it, it really doesn't have the same benefit. And that's a big problem with the, uh, you know, supplement industry, obviously, because people starting to get more conscious about the health, they're mm -hmm. actually going to a health food store or a vitamin shop or buy them online and spend hard earned money to then find out they're not working for them. Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, they don't work. Well, the research shows, research shows that certain ingredients or certain supplements do work. For example, a good one is glucosamine chondroitin for your arthritic knees and those types of things. But the research shows what type and what amount or concentration you need. And mm -hmm. so when you go to a, a regular store, you know, reports show that eight out of the 10 supplements on the shelves, the label does not match the contents because nobody controls the industry. And it's not the owners of the health food stores that, right. that know, you know, they're trying to help. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not pointing fingers there, but it's, it, it's an industry that's not controlled. And so many times these companies are there to make money, just mm -hmm. like the diet companies and the big pharma, they're there to make money. And so... You know, there may be big letters aloe vera, uh, but instead of getting the inner gel of the aloe vera, it may be the leftover peel that doesn't have any nutritional benefits and they can get away with it because, yes, it's aloe, the aloe plant is in there. So there's many criteria that we would have to look at mm -hmm. to make sure that we get a high quality supplement. And they're actually my first book, Health for Life. And even in the EMR book, I think I repeated them. But um you know, uh, one way to yeah, one way to get a shortcut is obviously make sure that you have you receive medical grade or professional grade supplements. And so, for all my clients, I simply have a full script, 
uh, account where they can go and all those supplements you cannot get in a health food store or, or regularly on Amazon. These are, uh, these are professional grade, meaning they are made in FDA approved labs. And so at least we know that the content matches the label. That's, that's a start right there. Yeah, that's a big start. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that having that insight and really understanding that gives you a little bit of knowledge. So when you're going out to source those, you can be, uh, you know, discriminate a little bit more about what it is you're actually going to purchase by just looking and trying to do a little bit of advanced, uh, you know, research to just kind of get a feel for that. So, um, uh, let's dive into the EMR and uh, the EMF, EMR, I, I think we, you know, it goes by two terms, but what is EMR and uh, is this danger growing exponentially? Um, what, what, is, what is the feedback that you would provide on that? Yeah, uh, EMF, EMR, EMF stands for electromagnetic field or electromagnetic frequency. And so we have electromagnetic fields everywhere. And they have, and the field has short wavelengths, which are, which are your X-rays and gamma rays. A lot of people probably still know it from school. It's that chart. And on the right side, we have the X-rays and gamma rays. And on the left side, we have our appliances, TVs, microwaves, cell phones, et cetera, with the short wavelengths. But regardless, regardless the frequency or the wavelength, these frequencies are these waves, they emit radiation. And that's what we're exposed to. And so the question is, is this radiation harmful to our body, right? And so um, it has been assumed that only the high frequency radiation like X-rays and gamma rays actually have enough energy to break down the bonds of uh, a cell and cause DNA damage, right? And cause free radical damage. And so <clears throat> that's, been, that's been published and we know that taking an X-ray or a mammogram or a test, you know, is harmful, but we don't do that every day. We do that once in a while. So, you know, um, so you do it or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. But what ha has been dismissed or what has been assumed for decades is that the non-ionizing radiation from our appliances, our electrical outlets, and again, most mostly today our Wi-Fi devices, our laptops, our cell phones, that it is not harmful because these non-ionizing or long wavelengths, they don't have enough energy to directly, you know, break DNA bonds. And that is correct. However, <clears throat> plenty of research now has shown that this non-ionizing ration from our cell phones and Wi-Fi devices and routers is actually much more harmful than the, than the ionizing uh, radiation because we are exposed to it 24-7. Mm -hmm. And it has shown that, yes, it doesn't have enough energy to directly cause DNA damage, but it does it indirectly. And so now we have about 30,000 um, peer-reviewed scientific published research articles showing on how it does that. And I can briefly share with the uh, listeners how that works. It's a little bit of science, but it's a consensus of mm -hmm. science all over the world. And for those who are research oriented, you can go to emf-portal.org forward slash en if you want it in English. That's emf-portal forward slash, uh, no, dot org forward slash en. So, and there you have the, the, the summaries and you have all those 30,000 scientific articles and the latest ones are, uh, are organized in the category last month. So you can continue to keep track of this research. And there's a general consensus that this non-ionizing radi radiation from our cell phones, et cetera, causes the same DNA damage just indirectly. So what happens is, is we have calcium and most of our calcium is outside of our cell, extracellularly. And we have a little bit of calcium inside the cell. Now, uh, the influx or the, uh, the, the calcium going from outside to inside the cell is highly regulated, regulated to voltage-gated calcium channels. And so it's very sensitive. Now, the EMR or the non-ionizing radiation from our cell phones, et cetera, will open up and activate these channels that causes then an excess influx of calcium inside the cell. So step number one is we have way too much calcium in the cell. That causes an increase of superoxide and nitric oxide inside the cell. And when they start combining, they form peroxynitrate. 
Now, peroxy nitrate is a strong oxidant that breaks down in carbonyl free radicals. Carbonyl free radicals are obviously free radicals, but they are much more harmful than your average free radical because they have a much longer half time. In other words, they float around in our system much, much longer and can cause much more damage. So that's the consensus in research. That's how this non-ionizing radiation that we're exposed to all the time mm -hmm. causes DNA damage. And therefore, we have an exponential increase in exposure because of our, you know, wireless devices, the G5 that's, you know, coming and all those types of things. So it is crucial today that we become aware of that. And that's why my book is called Invisible Threat. We can't see it, we can smell it, we can't hear it, but it's there. And when we can't see, hear, or smell it, or feel it, we usually think it doesn't exist. So it's important that people like you, you know, have me on to yes. really tell people, look, it's not because we can't see, hear, smell, and feel it that it's not there. Do your research, because there are many things that we can do. We don't have to move out of the city. We don't mm -hmm. have to isolate ourselves. But there's many things that we can do to shield ourselves from this harmful radiation and minimize what? Minimize toxemia. That's right. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a great point. And so you're talking about um, all these things that are being brought into our environment that weren't here 15 or 20 years ago. But we're, you know, like I was saying earlier, we're seeing a huge influx of all different types of conditions. And when you start talking about calcium and, you know, I start thinking about a lot of stuff related to the brain. So that would be your Alzheimer's, your Parkinson's, those different types of things. And although the jury might still be out, as far as what's exactly causing that, there's certainly something going on that's that's seeing or causing a huge influx in a lot of those different types of conditions. So I can, yeah, I can actually illustrate on that because, you know, remember earlier we said you don't have to be a health freak. And one of the concepts is that, you know, <clears throat> what's causing all this disease, we now know it's toxemia, right? Um, but when you're talking about Alzheimer and the brain, etc., I kind of want to give the viewers a little perspective on health because we can talk about health, you know, from many different angles. And we can't talk, we can talk about health on a cellular level also, and it doesn't have to be complicated because we have approximately 50 to 100 trillion cells. Now, we really as humans can't grasp that number because it's more than the stars in the entire galaxy, right? But what we do know is that every single one of those cells performs a few million chemical reactions per second. So if you want to know how many chemical reactions they occur in our body at any given second, you simply have to multiply 50 to 100 trillion with a few million, right? Yes. So next time somebody asks you if you're busy, you simply answer, yes, extremely. <laughs> <laughs> now, every one of those cells has about 100,000 receptors on its outer membrane. And uh, the mRNA or the RNA, which is the messenger in the cell, tells those 100,000 receptors constantly on what it is that the cell needs from the extracellular environment to replenish itself, repair itself, renew itself, and function optimally, right? It's a constant process. So, for example, let's say the uh, RNA says, hey, guys, we need vitamin C. Those receptors stick out their neck and try to find vitamin C. But what if, due to our standard American diet, SAD, right? What if that vitamin C is not available? Then our body and our cell is forced to settle for less compatible, less potent nutrients. And so my analogy usually is it's like, Instead of taking an original, you're going to take a copy and you're going to make copies of copies of copies. And after two, three cycles, you can't read it anymore. So that's what happens on a cellular level. We are using incompatible nutrients to repair and renew the cell. So now we're going to get degeneration, which is disease, and mutation, which is cancer, right? So what did we learn here very simply on a cellular level? We learned that we don't have the health freaks, but what we do, what we did learn is that as long as we give our body all the essential nutrients it needs on a daily basis, that the cell can get those nutrients and function optimally, right? Repair itself, renew itself, replenish itself, and no harm is done. 
So as long as we give our body everything that it needs on a daily basis, it's okay to have that one beer or have that piece of pizza or a taco on Tuesday. Because I'm not a health freak, but I consider myself in good health. But where it goes wrong is that 95% of us are not getting those essential nutrients. We only eat bad food and that's where things go wrong, but that's, what, that's when we get degeneration and mutation, disease and cancer. And Alzheimer dementia is degeneration of the brain. The brain does not get the nutrients to repair itself, to renew itself. It's degenerating, it's breaking down. It doesn't get enough healthy oils like your omega trees. It doesn't get the right proteins, the right peptides, the right amino acids. Okay, it only gets an influx of toxins that get through the brain barrier, and that's where the degeneration starts. So, again, you know, even though I teach people what health is, what disease is, what causes it, the solution on paper is not that hard. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to check, uh, check toxemia, uh, but we, we are really creatures of habit, and so it will require to break some habits. Uh, to get into this, you know, other lifestyle. Uh, but most people don't realize it doesn't have to take long. Usually a habit is broken after just a few repetitions. And in 12 repetitions, you're in a new habit. And now that new habit, you know, is the new you. And now you're craving that green juice. You're craving that ginger versus craving that empty filled burger. You know, it's just the way it is. It doesn't have to take long to turn things around. Just a mindset. It is, it is. But, you know, it's interesting is that when I saw your uh, presentation at the convention, I had a whole new respect for not skipping out on making sure that I take my vitamins. Because when you wrap your mind around that number, which is 50 to 100 trillion cells, and each one of those cells is performing how many functions a minute? A few million per a second. Per, per second. second, per second. And then those cells are going out looking for nutrients. And here I am not providing my body what it actually needs. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that's what it comes down to is health freedom. We're all responsible for our own health and taking that, that choice of getting that in our body. Yes. But when you start wrapping your head around those numbers and that type of function that's going on within our body, it definitely changes your mindset on what you want to put into it. And that's exactly, Sean, where conventional medicine goes wrong. Because if you now understand the complexity and the magnitude from our body, just by, by this simple presentation that I just did, then you, can, then you can start asking, are we really meant to understand the workings of this body? Because yes, we can put we can we can make a rocket ship and put a man on the moon, or we can build a nuclear plant and control it if there's no natural disaster. But we still don't understand one percent of the workings of the human body, and we never will, even if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. So what we need to realize is is that the body knows exactly what it's doing from the day that we're born till the day that we die. It will strive for perfect health. Every single cell in it. All we can do is put our body in the right conditions, in the correct conditions, so that it can heal itself. Drugs don't cure, surgeries don't cure, therapies don't cure, whole foods don't cure, supplements don't cure, nothing cures. Only the body can heal itself. Our job is to put it in the right condition so it can do that job. If the cells need to renew itself, make sure that the components that it needs are there. Mm -hmm. Make sure that toxemia is not causing a constant state of inflammation. So the body needs to put out fires and cannot burn the fat. So it needs to put all these important tasks to the side. Mm -hmm. That's all we need to do. Super exciting. And that's why when I talked to you this morning, I said, I love the book. I love all this information on the EMR, but it's such a wealth of knowledge that you have that, you know, obviously we can't get it all done in one day, but these are the types of things that in future uh, meetings that we'll be able to go into in a little bit more depth. Sure. So what is your strategy? We'll go back to the EMR. What is your strategy uh, to shield yourself from EMR? So in that subject, what are the things that we can do that'll help sort of mitigate, reduce the effects of that? There's basically four steps and it's kind of important we implement it as you know, one through four. Mm -hmm. So the first step is we live in our house and we spend a lot of time in our house. So we need to mitigate the EMR inside of our house. And the book has probably a hundred or more little things that we can simply check off and do, right? Mm -hmm. So, but to give you a few examples, you know, we have electrical outlets. 
and we can simply measure which of those outlets are giving us dirty electricity. And those that do, we can simply buy a little filter for a few dollars and put the filter there, right? Because a dirty electricity gives us a lot of radiation. Electromagnetic, we always have an electric component and a magnetic component. We also can simply buy a Gauss meter to see where our ma ma magnetic fields in the house uh, are. We call them hotspots. And we really want to avoid those hotspots. They are there, but that doesn't mean we need to put our bed right in it or we need to put our desk right in it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's many things that we can measure and see what's going on and kind of block that uh, radiation. We also can, for example, um, you know, we all have our appliances. Uh, we shouldn't have smart appliances. We have to go back to, you know, to wired, not wireless. So our laptops, our computers, we need a three-pronged grounded and shielded power cord. Everything that's wireless gives us a constant uh, radiation. Uh, our cell phone, obviously, that's in and outside of the house. Um, you know, our cell phone is one of the worst things, but there's there's a law of Newton that says the further it is away from you, the less radiation. So we always wanted to be on speakerphone. Uh, as far away as we can. If we don't use it, we want to put it on airplane, our airplane mode. We don't want to charge it next to the bed. Um, we don't really want to take a call if our um, the bars are low um, because the lower the bars, uh, the more signals will be sent to you to try to you know, get the signal through. So it exponentially, your radiation increases a thousand times whether you have one, one bar versus four bars. Mm -hmm. When you're moving, when you're in your car or when you're walking, you don't really want to be on the phone either because when you're moving, you constantly need to reconnect with that signal, which mm -hmm. is more and more radiation. So if you take a call, you should be still. And so again, I can keep on going on and on, but there's many, many things that we can do, simple things that don't cost money to just drastically limit that radiation. Uh, what else in the house? Um, you know, microwaves, uh, no smart appliances. There's many things that we can do in the house, right? Mm -hmm. Then the second step is we need to limit the outside radiation coming into the house. For example, the, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi and electricity from our neighbors, the uh, smart meters that our cities put on our house, the power lines, whether they're above ground or our ground, there's certain things that we can do to not allow them to come into our house. That's step number two. Step number three, we need to shield ourselves, okay? And so, for example, for the last uh, two, three years, I've been sleeping on what I call an anti-aging bed. Um, I actually didn't buy the bed because I have a good mattress, but I bought a cover to put over the bed. Now, this cover you know, is amazing because it is infrared light, which increases circulation, which is good when you sleep. It's recovery. It is grounded uh, into the electrical outlet. So it constantly feeds negative ions, which do what? They neutralize free radicals, right? So while I'm sleeping, I'm healing. Uh, but more importantly, because we're talking about EMR, this cover is silver nanotechnology treading. And it's proven that it shields us when we're on it, even if we're just in contact with it, put our hand on it, it shields us from all the electromagnetic radiation. And people say, oh, that's bogus. Well, you can simply buy a meter, measure the radiation right by your face or by your hands, then put your hand on the cover and suddenly you don't measure anything. So, you know, there's no discussion or, you know, a doubt about it, that it works. And so if you sleep eight hours, you know, that's 30% of your life that you are shielded from the electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation uh, EMR, <laughs> yes. electromagnetic radiation, and at the same time you're healing by feeding negative ions uh, into uh, the situation. Now we have the same fabric to put on your office chair, to put in the bed of your dogs and animals because they are exposed to the same thing. Uh, we can put it under our laptop, so we can use that clothing and fabric in many different ways to shield ourselves. Um, from the residual uh, radiation we're exposed to after we in, uh, incorporate step number one and step number two. And then the last step, Sean, is we need to repair our DNA because we cannot 100% avoid it, right? So there's always still going to be DNA damage. And so we need to do whatever we can to repair the damages that are done. So those are the four important steps to reduce the exposure and, again, uh, reduce toxemia in your body, avoid all and every disease. 
Right. And just a couple points, because obviously after reading the book, I've kind of done a little bit more research because it really got me thinking. And there are, um, I don't know what you call them, but they're the, the photos that you take that measure your uh, temperature and colors. So you'll be- Thermography. Yeah. Right. And so they have a picture of somebody using a cell phone before they start the call. And then they show the amount of radiation and heat that is penetrated into the brain. And that's after like a three minute call. And that is, that is just downright scary. And that's constantly, isn't it? And that's all, constantly. all day long. And that's one of the points that you make in the book is if you're going to use the phone, use it on speaker. Yeah. And, and on a distance, et cetera, and, a et distance, cetera. and right. not when you're moving. And yeah, there's many things to at least mitigate as much as you can. Yes. And when you see that picture, I guarantee you're going to really think twice about putting that thing up against your head. Yes, correct. And then another, another point that you brought up in the book, which um, sort of popped my little bubble, I have to admit, those little um, things that you put on the back of the phones, those little, yes. you, you basically say they, 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 probably don't work as well as we would hope they did. Yeah, that's correct. Too. I'm being nice about that right now. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's simple. Yeah. And again, it's simple. If you want to know if something works, I mean, you can buy EMF meters. If you go to my website, mvtonline.com or biohackingunlimited.com, there's a resources page. There's general resources. And then it says EMR resources, resources. There's all link. It's all free. It's all free for everybody. All the resources are there. So one of the resources is, you know, you can buy an EMR or an e EMF meter is mm -hmm. to measure all those things. And then it has a little guide to which should I buy and how do they work and, and, and links to where to buy them. So you do a little bit of research and decide to, to make that small little investment. And now, you know, when you're in a store and you have your meter with you, you know, how much is the radiation with the gadget and without the gadget? And if there's no difference, you're wasting your money. It's that simple. Just measure things if you don't believe it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So... With that being said, and it's damaging the DNA, what, what would be some key factors? What can we do to help repair DNA? Yeah, I mean, this is exciting. This is what I get excited about because we're in this really uh, era of, of stem cells and biohacking and anti-aging. And we're getting to a point where there's so much out there that we can do that wasn't available to us before mm -hmm. uh, that we as a simple man, you know, can do. And so the first thing that I want to share, because people don't know this, when we think about the old free radical theory, they said, well, there's one solution. We need antioxidants because the antioxidants will donate an electron to the free radical so it becomes stable again. Mm -hmm. And that's still correct. But let me expand on that because there's actually something much more exciting. When we have DNA damage, we actually have an innate DNA repair system. We have a system in our body that repairs damaged DNA. It's called the ART D1 system. Nobody cares what those letters stands for, <laughs> but it's a system of 17 enzymes that basically identify and censor DNA damage. And then they go to that DNA damage and they create a matrix and start repairing it. We have that system. Our body knows how to repair it. But just like I said before, uh, you know, many of our systems don't work because we don't put our body in the right conditions or the system doesn't have the nutrients or the fuel to make it work. So this specific DNA repair system that we have requires fuel. The fuel for that system is NAD+. I know many of listeners heard about NAD+. Now, NAD+, basically, is one of those um, compounds or molecules that is crucial in DNA repair but also optimal mitochondrial function, gene expression, uh, epigenetic modifications, etc. right? The research is all there. Now, that happens to be the fuel for this repair system. Now, the reason why it doesn't work for most of us because we don't have that NAD plus available, so repair systems simply can't work. So how do we get enough NAD plus in our system? Well, there's a few things that we can do. We have to have a low EMR lifestyle. You know, we've been talking about it because the EMR will deplete NAD+. Plus. So we got we to gotta do those four steps to mitigate the exposure to EMR, which will not uh, exhaust our uh, reservoir of NAD+. Plus. That's number one. Number two, uh, there's a few precursors to NAD+. Plus. For example, tryptophan has been shown to increase levels of NAD+, plus, but even better, niacin. Niacin is a precursor to NAD+. So those are two supplements 
or those are two compounds that you can find in certain whole foods too that will help you know produce our body NAD plus. Another thing that has been shown to increase NAD plus in our body is resistance training, strength training. So yes, going to the gym, not cardiovascular, but strength training increases the levels of NAD plus uh, in our body. So besides that, there's NAD plus supplements. Make sure it's a high quality one, or you can get regular IVs of NAD plus. So many different ways, but it's crucial to get any, enough NAD plus in our body so our body itself can repair DNA that's damaged. So that's step number one. Number two, there's another important compound, and this is all recent research, but it's very exciting. It's called NADPH. And NADPH is basically the battery of our cells. A lot of people say it's mitochondria. Mitochondria are our energy factories producing the ATP, but the battery, the, the, the way our uh, cells electrically keep doing its functions is fueled by NADPH. It's basically an electron reservoir. Now think about antioxidants. When they, we, we take antioxidants, we eat wholesome foods and, and uh, fruits and vegetables, and we're trying to get antioxidants in our body because we realize they can neutralize free radicals. It's a great concept. But when an antioxidant gives one free radical, the electron, the antioxidant is done. Mm -hmm. It only can do it once. Mm -hmm. But imagine we have an electron reservoir and when the antioxidant gives its electron, we can give that same antioxidant another electron and we can keep on doing that. Do you see how exponentially now we can have a much greater effect on keeping free radical damage in check? So yes, we need these antioxidants, but we need to fuel those constantly with electrons. And that's why we need to keep the NADPH levels in our body high. How do we do that? Same thing, low EMR lifestyle. Um, Molecular, molecular hydrogen, H2. Uh, some of your listeners probably heard about that too. They usually come in tablets. That's what I have. Uh, mm -hmm. And you put them in water and you drink it because H2 inhibits NOx. And NOx is the enzyme that breaks down NADPH. So by getting your H2 on a daily basis, you prevent the breakdown of NADPH. So molecular hydrogen uh, is important. Um, what else? Uh, stimulating the NRF2 pathway. We don't have time to go into that, but there's a whole wholesome food list that will stimulate that pathway, which again, you know, increases your NADPH levels. Not eating three or four hours before you go to bed. So early dinner, no snacks after. That saves an amazing amount of NADPH in your body. So again, we have many strategies to keep up our NAD+, plus, the fuel for the repair system, and the NADPH, our electron reservoir. If we keep those two at high levels in our body, we're going to have an amazing repair of all the cells that are damaged oxidatively or due to EMR and toxemia. So that's an enormous strategy that we can simply implement. Besides that, Sean, I would say there's many therapies and natural compounds on the market now that would help with DNA repair and when reversing aging. You know, talk about stem cells, exosomes. Uh, we can talk about compounds like Moringa, peptides, peptides uh, thymus, uh, biocitrate, uh, astaxanthin. And I'm just thinking, I can name up so many compounds, natural compounds that have been proven scientifically to have those benefits on our DNA, our mitochondria, and have anti-aging properties. Uh, stem cell shockwave therapy, hyperbaric chamber, our anti-aging bed company where I buy the covers from, they now have a very good hyperbaric oxygen chamber for home use. Mm -hmm. uh, so many, many things out there that people should look into to really continue to repair and renew our tissues, our cells, and our organs. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's great information. And I do want to just touch on again the, uh, the anti-aging bed cover because I also have been using that technology and, and that is uh, technology, like you said, that when you're on it is basically shielding you from that EMF and that EMR. Um, it's obviously, then it's providing those electrons, which is then, in, you know, neutralizing that buildup of free radicals. Uh, so, and then, and then you get into the far infrared, which is basically also helping stimulate the mitochondria, which is enha enhancing your production of the ATP. Um, but one simple tool is basically shielding you right there for about eight hours and helping the body kind of go into, 
how would you describe like a healing state almost? Well, recovery, healing, repairing, and even renewing, correct. Yeah. I mean, I always, you know, use, use analogies. Sometimes it's like, you know, when you go to your Publix or your grocery store, you know, people take product, 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 and what happens overnight? People are restocking. Now, imagine three days of non-restocking. How is that the supermarket going to look like? It's not going to function. It's not going to work. There's no production. People are going to be complaining. They can't find anything. Our body is the same thing. We use and we break down. And during the night, we need to repair and replenish and renew. And so sleep, obviously, that's another whole you know, uh, uh, interview. Sleep is very, very important. Uh, and that's why people ask me also many times, you know, why no eating, uh, why eating early and not eating before to bed? Because digestion takes an enormous amount of energy and based on what you ate, it takes a minimum of four hours. If you eat meat, six hours, meat's another topic, no meat, uh, six hours or shellfish, eight hours. So if you go to sleep and your body is still digesting for hours into your sleep, you're going to be restless. You're not going to get into a deep sleep because your body's working. But what you, what you can do now is do what you should do, which is repair, replenish, renew, regenerate, you know? So therefore, yeah, you cannot eat uh, before you go to bed. It needs to be at least four hours, four or five hours, ideally, before you go to bed. So when you go to bed, your body can 100% focus on what it needs to do is restocking those shells, right? That, that's, that's great information, really good information. So all these links, everything that we've talked about on this call, I'm gonna have all that information down there. Um, one thing also that I did wanna touch on is, um, you know, I was down in Orlando, now I've got that bed cover and we were talking about those meters. And I usually, so that, that individual, um, they call them the BioShield station. I, you know, it's almost like a, the size of a towel. It's very portable. Yeah. And so like you were saying earlier, you can put those on your computer. You can put them on a chair. You can basically use them when you're not in bed. So during the course of the day. And um, there's a gentleman, Dr. Mercola, um, who's very well known. And he basically said that he keeps himself grounded at least 20 hours a day. And he actually does because he lives in my town. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and so he lives on the beach. And when you go walk on the beach in the morning, you most likely can see him because grounding, he walks barefoot mm -hmm. on the beach while he's reading a book because he reads one book a day. I mean, he's an encyclopedia. He's, he's uh, really, really knowledgeable. And of course, I always, uh, you know, read his books too because he has also a really good book on EMR. Uh, it's called EMF. <laughs> and so, but you're right. He grounds, uh, he walks barefoot as much as he can because that's grounding with the earth, right? So you want to take those shoes off and be in contact with the earth. That's grounding because the earth will feed negative electrons into your body. So, and then he has the electromagnetic, uh, the, um, the bed cover probably too, or something similar, a PEMF devices. So yes, it's, that's exactly what he does. And again, we're sitting here talking for an hour. And so you could have been sitting on uh, the same cloth that you will be sleeping on to, you know, cover yourself. Your, your laptop could be sitting on it uh, and you can keep on going. There's actually, uh, there's actually EMF clothing on there. You actually could buy clothes or make clothes to wear. So wherever you go, you're protected. I mean, that's taking it yet another step forward, right? right. Um, there is fabric in there that, especially in your bedroom where you sleep, you could put that fabric on the inside of your curtains. So it doesn't have to look bad, but you could block that out because it's coming through your windows and everything from the outside too. So there's so many things that you can do. And again, you don't have to do it all at once. My books, usually the last chapters are usually check off boxes. You probably saw that. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes at their own place and you just say, okay, I'm going to do this this week and this this yeah. week. You do it at, at random. You do it uh, at your own time and just try to incorporate one more thing every day, every week. And eventually you will be, you know, yeah, one step superhuman. That's right. And uh, just to follow up on that story, going down to Orlando, um, you know, I usually travel with those those smaller pieces of fabric, which I actually have in the room right next to me, but because I have those constantly. So I forgot to bring it down to Orlando, right? I came down to visit. I forgot to bring it. Uh, I go a couple of days. John's down there. He says, hey, take this, you know, 
I forget to bring it because I'm running in and out. Yeah. So the third day I'm there, we're doing the meter test. And I touched that meter and I got a reading of OL, which stands for over the limit. So within the course of three days, by not being grounded, the amount of EMR radiation in my body had gotten to a point where that meter couldn't actually even read it. Wow. Yeah, it accumulates so fast because it's the non-ionizer. It comes, it, it's an onslaught from everywhere. Yeah. So we can't hundred percent avoid it, but we can mitigate a major part of it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Dr. Mike, thank you so much for your time today. So if people want to reach out to you, uh, what is the best way to contact you? Well, my website is mvtmikevantielen.com or biohackingunlimited.com. Um, also, um, I think, Sean, you can put up a QR code. Uh, yes. My new app, which is going to be Biohacking Unlimited, will be available. It will be free for the first month and then just a few dollars uh, for the rest. But we're going to try to really build that and put daily information out there for us to do exactly what I want people to do is take control of their health, regain control of their health, and then eventually not just be in optimal health, but become superhuman by really employing the biohacking technologies that are available. So that's going to be a great uh, app uh, for everybody to download. So we'll put the QR code here so everybody can also participate in that. That's fantastic. And I'm going to have all the links for everything that we've discussed. That'll be down in the, in the uh, description area. I'm also going to put a couple links on there for those um, anti-aging bed covers that we talked about and the uh, BioShield stations, which are the portable ones that you can use around the house. And, uh, and I'm going to be the first person when that app comes out that'll be signed up for it. That sounds good. So I am super excited. And like I said, this is just the beginning. I mean, there's so many subjects that we can go into. You've published so many fantastic books, many of which that I've got and many of which we can talk in the future. So Dr. Mike, thank you so much for all this information. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, for anybody out there uh, that's, that's watching this video, leave us some uh, comments in the description area. Give us some feedback. And um, Dr. Mike, we will look forward to seeing you again here in the very near future. Sean, I got to say thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. It's people like you that make it possible to get my message out without you guys. You know, I would be talking to two, three people. So this is a very effective way to, to for me to at least create that awareness, put information out there uh, so people at least can make informed decisions about their life, about their health and about their happiness. And I just hope they choose health freedom. That's right. Health, freedom, everybody. Dr. Mike, thank you so much. And God bless you, sir. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Same to you.